Hey guys, I build a lot of antennas out of wire, just simple portable antennas out, and I love to experiment with many different types of antennas for HF ham radio. I get a lot of questions, and uh, and I thought I would wrap all that together into one video to kind of go over a few things. It's pretty basic and pretty simple, but for someone just starting out into HF and building portable antennas out of wire, I thought I could help them out with a little bit of, in general of things to get. Hey, put together a kit or, or, or a toolbox of, of some of the things you would need to make some pretty good and some pretty awesome and many portable HF wire antennas. So here you go. Okay, I want to start this video off by saying that I bought everything here. I, I've got nothing sponsored, um, and I really encourage you to go find a brand or a uh, a build or a type for some of the parts I'm going to show you. Go, go do a search. I, I really don't want to put any links in the comments here because, you know what, I'm not endorsing anybody. I'm just showing you what I do. Let's start off with um, transformers, or ununs, or balans. And it, most of you probably know what they do, but just a quick rundown on what a what a transformer is, or a ballon, or an unun. It's the heart of an antenna system. Basically, it is where we make the feed point impedance match. So let's just say you have an antenna, and uh, at the match point, at the feed point of that antenna, the impedance is 20 ohms. You have 50 ohm coax going into that 200 ohm antenna, so a 4 to 1 Un un or balan there matches 200 divided by 4 is 50 so that is the heart of an antenna a lot of great um balans and un uns out there let's start with the, the the antenna everybody makes and everybody wants to make it's the infet half wave it's just amazing antenna and i um it's a 49 to 1 basically there are some uh made with others uh 64 to 63 to 1 64 to 1 anyway but a 49 to 1 and i have a 49 to 1 uh, un un that I use is the uh, 10 tennas 49 to 1. Great, great uh, un un. Uh, with this, you can make a, a sloping. Uh, I, I've built uh, in fed half waves, long wire sloping out of a window up high on the second floor. Also, down low from the ground up to a, a tree or a pole, or I've done mine usually by with a pole out on the beach or whatever. I've also made some pretty cool, those are basically for 40 meters, uh, and at 40, 20, 15, and 10. And uh, I, I've built also a half wave, uh, infed half wave vertical, it's a 20 meter infed half wave, so basically it's around 10 meters high, and put it up on a pole. So um, 49 to 1 un un is basically what you need for that. There's also, there's many other types out there, you can, there's... Uh, kits you can build yourself. There's the, the spark plug antenna, which I believe is actually a 64 to 1, but um, that un un is what you need uh, to basically put together an in fed halfway. Another really popular antenna is um, is a random wire antenna or a long wire antenna that's, um, and, and that uh, is a 9 to 1 un un. So um, I use LDG brand as kind of I, I just like them. They're easy to travel with. They're waterproof. Man, these things have gone through uh, some I've been through rain, snow, beach, salt water, what have you with these. It's just my preferred brand is the LDG, um, and this is the 9 to 1. 9 to 1 is pretty cool, and there's really look into uh, random wire antennas, and there's a lot of debate on that. We'll just call them in-fed wire antennas. Just like a half in-fed half wave, you can put them up horizontal, um, you know, sloping sloping up sloping down uh inverted there's a lot that can be done with a nine to one on un but I, I would recommend definitely after getting a 49 to one look over at getting a nine to one and and, and try that next up is uh use this a lot another ldg product is a four to one un un a four to one un un is great and uh un un being unbalanced for uh, an antenna I love to build vertical wise is the uh, the Ribikoff antenna and that's a vertical uh, at the feed point is somewhere near 200 uh, you do have to use an ATU or tuner with some of these uh, random wire type antennas or whatever these just get you a pretty close match with it but um yeah four to one un un is great for for building uh, I know I built a 17 and a half foot vertical uh, with it with a four to one and um and, and made some pretty cool stuff with that now this is a four to one un un 
four to one Balan is a little bit different. Uh, if you're building a delta loop, as you know, balance, the delta loop would be balanced, so they say a full wavelength for a, uh, a certain band. A uh, four to one Balan is, is, is where you want to go, not with an unun. So, you know, there's as the two I've got there the LDG four to one unun, the four to one Balan. Balan for a balanced antenna, unun, like you said, the, the Ribikoff definitely. You got ground, you, you have a ground plane, you have a, a, a vertical, that type of thing. So, there's a difference. It, that's a deep dive. You, may, you might want to do a little research and, and do some uh, some thought pattern on uh, on that. Getting back to the nine to one, another really good one that I have is the Nelson antenna nine to one. This thing is great. I've made some great antennas with it as well. Getting on to that now, a one to one. This is a one to one unun. I use this as LDG. I use this for a choke. So a lot of times, let's just say when I build a when I build the Ribikoff, I have a, the four to one there, short piece of coax to it and a choke. The reason I choke or anyone would choke is because you're trying to keep the RF in the antenna itself and in the ground plane and not back up your uh, your coax and that type of thing. I, I get a lot of questions on the Here's a, a little one-to-one -one ballon I use. This was built by uh, my friend N9SAB Tim. Um, this is great. It's like an inline a uh, one-to-one -one ballon. I use this, and this is great for making a dipole. A one-to-one -one ballon is a dipole. So what I what I do with this is I take and I'll hook up a banana clip uh, of this type here. Just just stick it in. Boom, and there you go. I can make a dipole, a balanced dipole, a resonant dipole with this one-to-one -one ballon and a banana clip. And what this does is this keeps the the this acts as the antenna this chokes the rf out so the coax itself is not acting as an antenna so um look around for a good one-to-one -one ballon also so what we talked about 49 to one ununs uh nine to one unun uh four to one unun four to one ballon um one to one unun one to one ballon so there's that's kind of what i've got in my my little arsenal of making antennas and and what i like to use Getting from there is, is wire itself. And uh, what I do, and this is so easy for me here in the U.S., is I just buy some speaker wire. This right here is Monster Speaker Wire is what I use. Works great for like 100 watts. A lot of you guys like to make antennas for 100 watts. This is 16-gauge wire. This is $16.99 as a video right now as I'm making this video. At Walmart in the United States, I have also seen this wire when i was uh, I, I traveled with this at first i go back and forth overseas to poland and have been working there so i took it with me it was heavy and then lo and behold i went to uh, the local grocery store it's kind of like a, you know a, a a somewhat similar to a walmart or a target in the states uh Oshan in poland went and looked in there and sure enough they had on the rack speaker wire so if you're traveling you might want to look around and just make sure if you, you don't have to carry all that weight with you you can find some other, you know some other type of speaker wire i'm sure it's everywhere in the world that you go you can buy a speaker wire but um that's what i use mostly um if you're more into something lighter and easier say you're a qrp type guy or something like that just go out and find some you can go online on amazon and find uh simple 22 or 20 gauge wire 18 gauge wire just do some research on the uh, amount of uh, power you're going to put out and the and the gauge of the wire that's a whole that's another in-depth uh video in itself and something i recommend uh, you do some research on before you build it if you're going to use power if you're just going to use say 100 and less the 16 gauge wire is great the the speaker wire it works wonders and uh it's cheap and uh, i go through it a lot i probably waste more than i should and probably should save some of it but i've got a lot of i got a lot of wire left over that i, I haven't used and um but it, but it's good it's uh, speaker wire works great for antennas and i highly recommend it and then if you don't want to go that you want to go something lighter go find something uh, uh smaller and, and do a little research on wire Next thing I want to talk about, especially for people that want to go out, you know, say soda, pot, or whatever, is, are poles. And poles um, are, this is where I, I've got, I've been through the gamut with this. Um, to get started, I, I would go look at, and you can find these online, they're called crappie poles or squid poles or telescopic fishing poles. And to start out with something simple and little, these little t telescopic poles, like this thing here is a, uh, I think it's just this one here is like a five meter pole with a five meter long pole you see how small this is and simple you can um you can definitely uh build a say a quarter wave ground plane 
for, for 20 meters or, or 17 or 15 or 10 or for even 6 or something like that. So these are simple, very cheap to get online. This one's called the Red Fox, I think it is. I got this on, uh, maybe this one on eBay. Um, that, that's an easy way to get started and cheap and not, not very uh, expensive. I will tell you this, after using these for the last 2 or 3 years of the, the small little um, crappie poles, I used, to, I used to swear by them. Uh, definitely, they, they don't make it. They don't last. They break very easy. They, they, they're... Their lifespan is not that well, so you know you're going to want to graduate to something a little bit better. And um, I would highly recommend going out and getting something like this. This is a 10 meter DX Commander uh, pole. I love this thing. I I use it for, as you can see, for some of it. It's a telescopic pole, and uh, I use this for my bigger antennas, like uh, for instance the uh, the vertical. Uh, Infant halfway for 20 meters. Uh, a lot of things you can do with this. I've actually built a, uh, a delta loop on this uh, thing right here. And I know a lot of people here in the states were like, "Well, it's it's it, it is now offered in the states. In the past, it wasn't." But you know, I ordered this directly from from Callum at DX Commander, and I got this within a week. So if you want to order directly from 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 Callum, you can do that. I, I do know now. I believe he has a U.S. distributor for the DX Commander pole. That's the 10 meter version of the pole. I also have his, his seven meter pole, and then while recently, while I was over in Europe working, I went into uh, and if you're somewhere in Europe or maybe you can find these in the states, I found this is a six meter pole, and it's much better than one of the uh, than the tele the little uh, crappie or squid poles because this thing's a telescopic pole too. But as you can see, that's about uh, 20 maybe a little bit more than 25 millimeters or, or, or an inch or so in diameter this thing is tough small got right into it. this is six meter pole it's called the lakeside travel if you can find something like this online or in the states this one is made uh, by Caprolin and uh, th this thing is awesome I really just just got I've had this thing about a month and like I said it's a as you can see it's a big step above these but if you're getting started and you don't want to spend a lot of money and you just want something easy this is um they're great and what I usually do with these is is supporting these a lot of people put guy wires up and that type of thing I just use PVC pipe or like in the states we have a uh, surf rod fish fishing pole holders um, one thing I've discovered lately that I've really fallen in love with is a beach umbrella spiral spike that you could just put it. They use them in the sand to hold up a beach umbrella. And, you know, with the wind and how heavy a beach umbrella, these things are, are pretty stout. And I, I like using those. I put them in the ground for my antennas, not just on the beach, but uh, in the dirt. They, they work well, and it's something I highly recommend. Um, another, a few other things for, for, for building antennas I'm going to highly recommend, as I showed you a minute ago here. Um, Banana clips. These things are great. You can make dipoles out of them. I've made a vertical, uh, my many of my vertical antennas, a, a vert quarter wave verticals. I use these, and like I said, you can snap it right on to a one to one uh, ballon to use as a choke or, or or whatever. If it's a dipole, you can do it that way. Um, I highly recommend you get a lot of these and, and, and put them in your bag. Along with that, get all the connectors you can get i've gone out and to with an idea of building an antenna it didn't have the right part but uh like a so239 or a pl239 to bnc connector because it depends on what type of coax if you're a pure bnc guy or a qrp and everything you have is bnc then you probably don't have to worry about these so much but these are great for when you're uh let's just say you're you're building an antenna and you're, you got all your parts together for instance uh here i'll take a this is a a uh, the four to one. If I got a four to one and I'm building an antenna and I have a B and C uh, coax, you know, put it on and uh, you're you're good to go. I you can get these in mass. You can get like a a couple of uh, I think on Amazon actually where they'll give you a, a conglomeration of a bunch of different ones. Buy two or three of those. They're inexpensive. They're cheap and uh, they will go a long way and will get you out of trouble because, like I said, I have gone out and. Uh, with an idea of an antenna and got there and did, had the wrong coax for the wrong uh, un -un point there to, to put them together, either SO239 or BNC or whatever. I highly recommend that. Get you get yourself a lot of adapters and fittings. Um, one last thing you definitely want to get is a, uh, a good wire cutter, wire stripper, 
Uh, I've got a couple different ones. I, I'm not going to recommend a brand or whatever. Go ahead and get you one of these and put that in there. Start cutting wires and start building antennas. Start having fun. That's what. That's all I do. I, I like to investigate an antenna. I see it. I was like, you know what? I'm going to try that. See if it works and, um, and, and do it that way. But anyway, I just wanted to get together here a, a few things that I have uh, to, to build a nice little box, a nice little kit. Of, of, of little tools you would need to really get out there and start building many different antennas. There are hundreds of antennas that you can build with what I've shown you here, you know, with the poles. Um, if you're somewhere near trees and, and you don't need the poles, buy that last and, and, and put your money, I would say put your money into a good uh, collection of, of transformers, of ununs and balance. That's going to go a long ways for you. And then um, and then all you need is wire, wire cutters and some fittings and you're ready to go. And make some pretty good antennas. I, like I said, I highly recommend that. Get to the point with the uh, the poles later. But uh, I, I, me being a guy that operates mostly by the water or near the beach, I don't have the trees to do that. And, um, and I just have to do it. And it's kind of nice. And, um, and I can build some pretty cool antennas. Anyway, I hope that helped you a little bit. I know it might have been more. Some of you guys that have been around for a lot of years. I'm sure you're going to comment and tell me what I missed or whatever. Go right ahead. If you absolutely put it in the, uh, in the, uh, in the comments there. Let's say uh, maybe something I need to go pick up. But that's the basics of what I have in my, um, in my kit, my toolbox there for building antennas. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like and subscribe. Until next time, I'm Walt K4OGO73, my friends.